Hi everyone, this is lecture three for module one. It's all about the historical revolutions that have occurred throughout human history and uh, particularly the way each of those has brought, in us, brought us to the levels of population growth that we see today. So during this presentation, I wanna describe some of the major cultural revolutions throughout history. I want to look at environmentalism specifically and put it in the context of these various revolutions. I want to talk about the Green Revolution specifically, and I especially want to differentiate between this term Green Revolution, which does not refer to our modern use of the word green. It actually talks more about the way we've been able to grow green things, often in ways that are not very environmentally friendly. So this term revolution, we could, I guess, talk about political revolutions, but for this course, we're not really uh, looking at those. We're looking more at cultural revolutions. And so there are two definitions. One I took from um, dictionary.com. It says, in sociology, a revolution is a radical and pervasive change in society and the social structure, especially one made suddenly and often accompanied by violence. Well, especially that last part, that violence part, that really sounds a bit like the political one. So maybe the simpler and more appropriate for today's um, topic is that a revolution is just a historical period of great change in knowledge and technology. Uh, especially knowledge and technology is really what this presentation is all, all about. So there are a number of key revolutions that I can point to. Uh, a few of these are actually gonna come up later on in the semester as well. Because when we talk about agriculture, uh, we're especially going to talk about a revolution such as the Neolithic, uh, give or take a couple thousand years, but this was around 12,000 years ago. And um, that's, the, that's when we saw uh, the development of agriculture and other technologies. Uh, much more recently, we have the Industrial Revolution, the Medical Revolution, I'm going to go into all these by the way, the Green Revolution, and then today's Environmental Revolution. So that Neolithic, um, this is the one where human culture shifted from hunter-gatherers uh, and then settled down to start forming communities built around agriculture. This revolution did lead us to the domestication of animals and crops, the establishment of villages, towns, eventually cities, and it really kind of gave primitive humans the opportunity to spend less time hunting and more time reproducing. So we're talking about human population growth. So by settling down, human society was able to grow. The Industrial Revolution, um, this is 17, 1800s. Um, this is when we saw the wide-scale development and use of fossil fuels and the invention of many complex machinery. Um, again, for today's lecture, we're looking at things like farm equipment, things that allowed us to grow food, to grow our population, but also transportation, trains, um, eventually cars, uh, steamships, uh, all of these things led to the rapid growth of uh, civilization. Uh, but also a topic for later in the semester, the Industrial Revolution is really when we started to see a lot of, uh, a really large increase in pollution as well. The medical revolution, probably one that had one of the largest impacts on human health, human mortality, human death. Uh, this is um, medical revolution. So Louis Pasteur is one of the most famous parts of this. Uh, and among other discoveries, he demonstrated that various diseases were, were caused by bacteria. Uh, and eventually his work led to the development of vaccines, which we know, um, I hope you know, they work really, really well today. Um, this revolution also led to an understanding of the need for clean water and uh, different ways to prevent waterborne diseases. And for population growth, uh, this, this revolution really led to a great decrease in mortality rates uh, due to disease. So at this point then, human population really started to increase in speed quite a bit. The Green Revolution, this is 1930s to 1960s or so. Um, this is a period where we were able to really grow green things far more effectively. 
and that's really where the term comes from. Again, it's not it's not this modern use of the term green and as an environmental thing, but instead this is a period when we really figured out how to grow a lot of green things. Uh, and so um, a couple different results of this, we were able to develop high yield varieties of various cereals, and these are um, cereal grains, not your, your average breakfast cereal. Uh, we increased uh, and improved the use of artificial pesticides and also artificial fertilizers. Oh, and um, improved irrigation systems as well. Um, kind of getting repetitive now, but yeah, there's there could be confusion. So this term green, one more time, we're talking about growing green things. It's not an environmentally friendly concept, actually. The over using way too many pesticides and herbicides. This is actually anti-environmental. Okay, and uh, we've already talked about a couple of those things. And then the final revolution that I wanted to talk about briefly is our much more modern environmental revolution. This one started around the 1960s and continues today. And we can define it, we can define this revolution as the ongoing process of switching from pollution causing and climate changing technology to efficient and clean technologies. And that just comes from Wikipedia. Uh, we find that during this revolution there is a greater concern for living things, for environmental health, and sustainable, sustainable living. And from the EPA, um, we, sh we do need to dis define sustainability, which is creating and, ma and maintaining the conditions under which humans and nature can exist in productive harmony, yet meet the social, economic, and other requirements of present and future generations. Um, much more simple, down-to-earth definition of sustainability is maintaining the earth in a way today that allows it to continue to provide at the same or better levels in the future. So keeping our environment just as healthy as it is now or better. Um, fishing species of fish out of the ocean in levels that allow them to continue and not go extinct. Uh, sustainability is a large topic this semester, and that term will come up periodically. Um, this revolution, um, I already mentioned, started in the 1960s, uh, but we have seen many milestones along the way, some of which I'm going to talk about uh, many weeks from now in Module 12. I'll introduce Rachel Carson. She is, in, in a lot of ways, considered to be the mother of the environmental revolution. Um, and there have also been a bunch of, a couple major oil spills and other environmental damage, dam uh, disasters that have brought light to the damage that we've been doing to the earth. And the next presentation for this module will actually look at some of these environmental disasters. Uh, we've also seen the founding of Earth Day and many laws, which I will briefly talk about in, in one of these presentations. Uh, for now, just a couple quick environmental disasters, but like I said, I do have some others in a different presentation. Um, back in 1969, so kind of the early days of the environmental revolution, there was a major oil spill off the California coast. Um, this is the Dos Cuadras oil spill. It is, It was located northwest of Los Angeles, if you see in the little map down there. At the time, it was the largest oil spill to date uh, off of U.S. waters, but today it's third. And um, at the time, outrage over this oil spill did lead to um, a lot of demonstrations and some regulations uh, against the oil industry. Richard Nixon, um, President Nixon, was actually pretty environmentally influential, influential in this country. He signed in 1970 the Environmental Policy Act and this was the first law that actually required that a clean environment be considered in future federal regulations. He also, later on in 1970, signed Reorganization Plan Number 3, which is where the EPA comes from. Uh, long story short, ultimately Congress actually had to write its own bill that would then also establish the EPA because the president technically cannot do that totally by himself, but 
uh, we still have the EPA today. Uh, there have been a, many, many environmental laws. I have a short list here, very short, and I'm really not going to go into those, but I think it's useful to see that these have all been parts of the environmental revolution. So the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act are two very famous laws. The Endangered Species Act, uh, Safe Water Drinking Act, the Oil Pollution Act, CERCLA, which is the Superfund law, um, TOSCA, which is the Toxic Substances Control Act, and many others. Uh, today, we've really only gotten to where we are in terms of society and our population levels based on all of these uh, revolutions. And we really are in the midst of an environmental revolution. It continues, and um, in a way, we maybe could look at today as being a separate renewable energy revolution, but that's kind of my own idea. Uh, the quote from Herat, I should have practiced that, Heraclitus um, is that the only change is constant. Um, so in this presentation, we did go over some of the key revolutions in human history and um, the Green Revolution especially, uh, we will talk about at points during the semester, led to an expanded era of agricultural growth, um, primarily through the use of synthetic pesticides and herbicides. And also there is a long history of environmental damage uh, and change in the United States, and that's where we'll be going next. So I'll see you in, in that presentation.